this would be 14 centimeters of snow depth. 14. Welcome, I'm Davin Heimbach, Water Resources Coordinator with the Asable Bayfield Conservation Authority. We're going to show you what a snow survey is and why we conduct our snow surveys. Hi, I'm Tommy Kokus, a Water Resources Engineer with the Asable Bayfield Conservation Authority. And today we're going to demonstrate how a snow survey is conducted. We have approximately 10 stakes located uh, 30 meters apart, representing infield, fence line, and forested area. And right now we are at one of our locations that is a forested area. We survey snow at eight different locations around our watershed to get a sense of how much water equivalent is sitting on our landscape. We go to select locations. You can see points in the background here that have posts on them. And at each one of these locations, we take our snow core here, we get a depth measurement on snow, we take the snow sample, we put it in a bucket, we weigh it, and then we do that over 10 points at each one of our eight stations. And from that, we're able to uh, evaluate what the flood potential is. The ABCA conducts snow surveys from late fall through to the early spring. We collect our samples at the beginning of each month and at the middle of each month, but also in advance of any snow melt that we can expect. We collect our samples from eight locations across the watershed, with some of these sites having data going back nearly 60 years. 26 centimeters. Data collected from these surveys includes information on the snow depth, the snow water equivalent, or otherwise known as the amount of liquid water content in that snow pack. 15 centimeters. And from those two values, we can determine what the density of the snow is. So the tools that we use in a, a standard snow survey are a, a scale, a digital scale, um, we have used uh, spring scales in the past. Uh, we have a, a sampling tube, which is the Montrose sampler. That cylindrical tube gives us a snow depth by the degradations on the side of the tube, but it also collects a core inside that we can then use to put into a bucket and weigh the cumulative snow at 10 separate locations within each snow course. And that gives us an average for that location, which is then used more broadly for that sub watershed and that's the information that gets into the model. So in previous snow courses, we've used the standard uh, paper and uh, clipboard method, but this year we've uh, changed to a more modern version of using uh, a phone tablet to record the numbers. So we have an Excel spreadsheet built into the uh, phone that allows us to track all of our numbers and uh, determine uh, the snow water equivalent at the end of each snow course. So this is the module within the flood forecasting model where we enter the snowpack. So we're entering conditions for each of the locations based on snow depth and the snow water equivalent. We then calculate that into the model with temperature, precipitation, and we get a prediction of what our flows would look like. Now this model is a computer representation of our watershed, which tells us uh, stream flow, uh, water level, uh, we can incorporate the temperature into the model, uh, precipitation, and using this model, we can determine what the, the flows are expected to be like uh, during an event. And then this information is used to determine whether a water condition statement is warranted or a flood watch or a flood warning. Having an understanding of the current snowpack conditions is important to the flood forecasting and warning program as we head into a winter melt or a spring freshet. Knowing what the snow depth is and the snow water equivalent allows us to compare to other years and what we can expect based on what we learned from those events. By using a snow density, we can then estimate how much capacity there is in that snowpack to carry any additional rainfall, but it also lets us have a sense of the timing of when we can expect that snow melt to occur. We can then calculate and quantify the timing, the duration, and extent of any potential flooding. Once we know that flood potential, we will then issue a message to our member municipalities and other partnering agencies. For more information on floods and flood messaging, visit our website at abca.ca. Thank you for watching.